Rated M for Mature. What's going on, people? Fame Entertainment here from TICGN.com. And welcome to episode 24 of the Tick Double XP podcast. I'm going to get right to it. Start with the introductions. Hold up. Man. I don't know <laughs> what that was. I don't know if you guys heard that, but I just got something nasty in my, in my headset. I do apologize. We're going to start with the intro. We're going to start with my light skinned brother from somebody else's mother, Mr. Nicodemus X. Mm -hmm. What is good is Nicodemus, the king of Indies himself. And if you got a problem with my opinion, you got a problem with free speech. Have mercy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Then we got my right hand, warm man, Miss 2v1 herself, Mama Sita. What's up, everybody? Mama Sita. I'm glad to be here in the house again with everybody. And, uh, Shout out to our guests and um, thanks for joining Double XP tonight. And uh, let's talk games. Next up, we got somebody who hungry because he just don't have enough food. <laughs> Too much food. What's happening, man? Hey, what's going on? I want to thank everybody for having me here. Definitely, uh, I wanted to get a little more involved in the community as I've been absent. Thankfully, due for good reasons like homework, trying to get that education, but um, trying to make some more time for gaming, trying to make for more time for Tick. Uh, this is my first show as an official member of Tick, um, and I'm really excited. So let's get this going. Much respect for you doing your school thing, my brother. Thank and you. as and as requested from you guys who are watching the show. I've had I've had people come at me and say, man, you need to get Porter Rock on the show. Well, we got Porter Rock on the show. What's happening, man? Hey, what's up, Fame? Hey, I just want to thank you for the invite and I and I want to thank everyone that requested me on the show. I appreciate it, man. That means a lot. And so uh, as, as we're sitting here on YouTube, we got about uh, more dislikes than likes. And all we said was our name. So that's actually pretty interesting. So if you guys are watching, <laughs> uh, thank you. If you guys are watching on TICGN.com, we appreciate it. If you're watching on our Tick Game Network, I appreciate you. And if you are listening on iTunes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So before we get to the main topic, uh, we, I have to address something. Uh, we found out that hashtag Nick does love Xbox. So <laughs> we can stop with the Nick hates Xbox. That's actually open. He actually loves Xbox. He what, proved it. What, uh, what, what, did, what exactly proved it, though? <laughs> Nick, uh, he, he did send me a gift of him kissing Black Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to release it whenever I'm ready. So, um, yeah, you know, we know Nick loves Xbox, so that's that's awesome. But I do want to find out, you know, what you guys are playing. Let, let's go around the bing real fast and let's figure out what you guys are playing. Nick, what, what are you currently playing, brother? Yo, so I'm on my uh, third playthrough of uh, Near Automata. So those of you who follow me on Twitter and uh, listen to me on any podcast, you know I've been hyping this game up to no end. So I'm on the third playthrough, which is absolutely so far the best playthrough. Like the way they broke up this game uh, story-wise is just genius. Like it just totally keeps you enthralled and engaged the entire way through. It's like they constantly are kicking up the action to new levels. Like just when you think it can't get no better, it gets better. Like I'm not even over hyping this thing. Like at first, I'm not gonna lie. At first, when I started playing the game, I was just admiring the eye candy, right? In the game, I was just totally admiring the eye candy. Then I started actually falling in love with the story, action, all that stuff. So it's beyond that now. So I'm loving that game. Uh, me being the king himself, I did pick up a uh, Wonder Boy, The Dragon's Trap. Been waiting for that for a while. And um, so I got that. It's a side-scrolling platformer game. Uh, it's a it's a remake of Wonder Boy Part 3, which was actually back in the Sega Genesis days, for those of you young enough to remember that. And then last but not least, I've been playing Drawn to Death with the fam. You know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, sir. The <laughs> LXP fam. So much fun. Much more fun actually playing with you guys than when I played it uh, in the alpha and the development stages of that game. So, man, that game is lit with, with y'all anyway. So... Yeah, that's about it, really. That's all I had time for. Ma, what you playing, sweetheart? Oh, man, I got a main game, and I got a couple of side games, too, so. <laughs> Whoa, look, well, Ma, well, I'm telling y'all, listen, every episode, Ma gonna say something that's a, that's a double on top. <laughs> <laughs> what I do? My main game is uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. Andromeda. And uh, so, I don't know, I'm gonna be on there for a minute, because I'm just kind of trying to take my time with that. And um, and then uh, 
when I get sick of playing it, I just go to Horizon Zero Dawn. So uh, that's where I'm at. And drawing the Duff was was real. Uh, that was real nice. We had a good time. Good time with that. I'm just trying to figure out, Fane, why you uploaded. I saw the video. You uploaded uh, Dominance. Did you uh, see that, Nicodemus? Uh, I, saw, oh, I saw that. Uh -huh. I saw it. I he he, it he won one round out of how many? Out of <laughs> six, six, seven? It's, yeah. all, it's all about the perception. Uh -huh. Thank you. And he going to pull up Thank Dominance. You. Yep. Dominance with the RPG. Yeah, uh -huh. The only yeah. weapon he was actually getting kills with. Exactly. <laughs> Hold on, but you can clearly see me me shoot Nick in the face with, a, with, a, with the AK a couple times. Yeah, you was getting. We could also you getting clearly good see you shooting the ground a couple of times too. Yeah, I just listen. That well, too. I peeped that as well. Yep. Well, who caused who caused the most rage? Who was calm, cool, and collected? Yours. Who was raging? Your your pathetic ass <laughs> um character that basically for those of you who don't know that did not catch that epic stream. Mm -hmm. Um, Fame had a character to where every time you killed him, he exploded like some kamikaze terrorist, and he would take you out with him. And the thing about this game is that every time you get a kill, it gives you a point. But every time you die, you lose a point. So every time you face this man, you got a point and you lost a point. It was mm -hmm. a total ripoff. <laughs> complete, <laughs> complete ripoff. Yes. So, this man, he just in there laughing. So laughing his mad. ass off. <laughs> yes, I'm still, yes, I am still mad about that. That was a ripoff. I should have won many games because of, dude, I should have won many more games. <laughs> oh man! So and you guys haven't played Nick, We today. weren't even using. I wasn't using my special ability. I wasn't. We I, didn't, using I didn't know how. I didn't know yeah, how. Me either. Mm -mm. I told you in the live stream. I told y'all how to use it. No, nah, no. Nah, yeah, he told. You told he told us. He told us, but um, I was like, yeah, I couldn't get used I didn't to hear it. it. I couldn't. I couldn't change on my flow the way I was playing at that point. But he did tell us. I was so busy trying to run and stay alive. So. Yeah, running and gunning. Yeah. Man, y'all didn't watch the stream. Y'all gotta make sure y'all watch it. We're gonna do it again. So, hey, real quick, before we move on from that, before we move on from that, I said I was gonna do is I gotta give Mama C her props. Mama C to hold it down. Mama C knows how to play these games. She won, I think, like <laughs> three in a row. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I'll she, take it. She was holding it down, so I, I gotta give you your props, Mama. I, I and I and I gladly take it. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh huh. Too much food. What you playing, brother? Um, actually today I ended up picking up, uh, Destiny Rise of Iron. I don't know I'm late on that, but, um, again, uh, uh that can be attested to classwork since uh, I was really busy with school. I didn't pick it up when it come out, came out. Also, I wanted to wait for a price drop on the physical game disc, the Destiny, the collection, uh, because I'm a physical guy. I can't stand digital and that whole aspect there. So, um, now I own it. I physically got it. Uh, I've been playing it a little bit today. Um, mainly on the Nintendo Switch, which kind of like is very accommodating to that of my schedule with me being on the go all the time. I work now, going to school, going to work. Um, I've been playing uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild. And if I don't have that much time on my hands, but I got a, just a couple minutes to play something, I got fast RMX on there. So between those three games, I, I'm, I'm pretty busy at the moment. Um, but um, having fun, definitely making it happen. That's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. Porter Rock, what you playing, brother? So right now I'm trying to finish um Horizon Zero Dawn. Um last As week. we speak. Yes. <laughs> no, but um yeah, I've been playing that and I need to go back to Neo. And then I wanna go um, play between uh, Mass Effect and MLB baseball and work those games in. But yeah, That's I'm kinda cool. behind in gaming like over there. I'm gonna need you PlayStation dudes to finish Horizon. Like y'all been disrespectful. Well, yeah, <laughs> real, like, real talk, real talk. I'm being very disrespectful to that game. How? Because I ain't beat it yet. I, I I haven't even made it halfway, fam. <laughs> oh, that's awful. <laughs> Real talk. I haven't I haven't played it in like two weeks. Why not? You didn't like it? No, because I've been playing like near. That's he about to walk around yeah, looking two beat booty all day. No, nah, I, I told you that was just the first playthrough, fam. I'm past yeah. that. I'm on the third play. That's what I try to do. I don't try to do a lot of games at the same time. I try to just focus on one, enjoy it, do the side missions, whatever. Because once I'm done, then I just move on to the next one. So yeah, but me juggling two or three games, yeah, that's kind of hard. I think that's a that's a good way to be. I really wish I could be that way, and I've tried really hard to to condition myself a little better. Mm -hmm. Just that with Horizon Zero Dawn, I didn't want to run through. I could have ran through it to finish it before Mass Effect Andromeda. But I felt like I wouldn't be doing myself, you know, I'll be doing myself an injustice. I didn't want to just beat the game and say, just to be beating it. I just want, I wanted to take my time and enjoy Horizon Zero Dawn. Of course, Andromeda came out 
And so I kind of went to that. And um, so sometimes I do bounce forth between because sometimes it, I get upset know, about it. But you know, the honest, to be honest with you, um, I knew I normally do bounce like that. But when there's a game that, and this is rare, that makes me just only think about that game, I can't bounce like that. Like yeah. when I when I got the draw to death or whatever, I did that to play with you guys, which I don't regret. It's definitely fun. And then Wonder Boy the Dragon Trap, just to be honest, uh, I'm the king of indies. And so that was a business decision because I needed the gameplay for my channel before I got too old. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, I wouldn't have got it. But yeah, Nier just totally has got me. You know, so once I'm done with that, then I can move on. Other than that, I can't because I, I won't stop thinking about it. So. Yeah. Well, that's how I am too. If it, if it's my game, a game that I'm really waiting for and I really want to play, I'm not going to put it down. Just an Andromeda didn't really captivate me. Yeah. Like I thought it would. Yeah. So. All right. So what's hard for me. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead, brother. I said what's hard for me was um like the back to back to back RPGs because I like to take my time with RPGs. Also, I like to do the side missions, develop my character, and by the time I was getting in my groove with Neo, Horizon Zero Dawn came out. And I'm like, all right, yeah. Let me stop this and go to this, and then Mass Effect is out. And Persona <laughs> 5, this game ridiculous. Exactly. So back to back, like, because RPGs are long. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like an action game, you know. And yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You got to put a lot of time me. on those. Yeah. 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 So I, I, I want to go ahead and jump into the first topic. So a, as we know, over the last three years, a lot of people in the, in the Xbox side of things have said that Digital Foundry has a bias against Xbox, mainly because when they do comparison videos, with the games, the games run better on the PlayStation 4, which shouldn't be a shock because the PlayStation 4 compared to the Xbox One had better hardware. So that's been the narrative over the last three, four years. Mm -hmm. Well, recently, Digital Foundry was blessed enough to go and uh, have hands-on with Black Jesus, a.k.a. Xbox Scorpio. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and that's Nick's name, by the way. I stole yeah. that. Hey, we are we are the, we are in the family. You use what I use. I use what you use. This is the family. Go ahead. So, so you know, ever since then, uh, Digital Foundry and Eurogamer have been pushing out articles. Seems like at least one article a week, giving high praise to Project Scorpio. To which now um, you are hearing PlayStation fans and also uh, other media sites like Kotaku were actually running out and saying that Digital Foundry is in bed with Microsoft. Oh my God. <laughs> so I, I want to get y'all's thoughts on this. Is Digital Foundry with giving out so much Scorpio coverage over the last week, week and a half? Are they in bed with Microsoft guys? Oh boy. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll let somebody else start this because this is ridiculous. And let me start. You know, you know Digital Chumbi was never biased. They're technical guys. You know, you, you can't say you're biased when the test equipment is telling you the truth. And that's all they do. They're excited because it's new hardware, and that's really what their channel is about. They're about showing new hardware, new technology. So, you know, and Scorpio is now the new, more powerful thing. So, yeah, they're going to hype it. It's not, it's not about bias. It's, that's what they do, you know? Yeah. If, you know, that's what they, they always been that way. You know, they have test equipment. They take the information, and then they talk, and they talk about it. So, the, it's really people just, you could say they're uncomfortable hearing that the product they prefer is weak. <clears throat> You know, for the first three years, it's on the Xbox side. Now you're going to see it more on the PlayStation side. And then, you know, it's just what it is, you know. Look, I was one of the people uh, that said, um, I'll say probably, honestly, I'll say back a year ago, I remember saying that Digital Foundry, they're like kids with guns. And I say that I, I, I'm, I'm pro guns. I think people should have them, but I think it's about practicing, being responsible with them. Now, you live in Texas, sir? You live in Texas? No, I do not. Oh, okay. Um but um, I always said that. So that's how I feel with the, how they are with their equipment. That's how I felt back then. Cause I was saying, uh, I was making a comparison to them being the children and having weapons, that technology and that software and kind of ruining gaming because I, at least I, I'm not even old, but growing up, it was about whether the game was good, whether it was fun. It was never about resolution, just its looks. Um, if it was great, I mean, you you enjoyed its visuals, of course. The art style, direction, and, and all that stuff is great. 
um, but it was never predominantly the visuals. Now with them, because they are so focused on the statistical part of things, people have forgotten what makes a game a game, what makes it success. So what happens is, is we wound up with a generation of people that only cared about visuals. And here's the thing, this is the, the part that I love most, um, is that math numbers, they are unbiased. It is completely true. You can't yep. skew it. It is what it is. The number two is the number two, and it always will be forever. So we're looking at this new console that's more powerful than those that have released um, of a you know uh, years before with even older hardware than that of the year of which they released. So it's not a surprise that this is looking good. The one year difference and difference of silicon and the technology that's available for them. Um, it has made a real big difference. So these people who are saying they are biased, they're just not liking facts. And those people that don't like facts don't care about math. Those people that don't care about math don't care about facts. Scorpio's better in terms of, of, of pure power, but uh, like everybody's gonna argue, the people who hate this show, the people who love it, it's about the games. And for me, it's about how good they are, how fun they are, the mechanics of it. For others, for some damn reason, it's gonna be whether it's pretty or not. So just get a nice screensaver if you care about visuals, but if you like mechanics and if it's fun, get a game. Period. Yeah, here's, here's my thing. Yeah, that, was, that was definitely standing good. ovation. Definitely here's, here's, standing my thing to that. ovation. here's my thing to that though. We we as the quote unquote hardcore gamers, we we make the choice to go as deep as we do as far as paying attention to, you know, digital foundry and you know, learning about, you know, frame rates and uh, resolution we make the choice to do that like a lot of casual gamers and stuff they still just totally pay attention to only how fun the game is like they don't care about dips in frame rate they don't care about you know um what's that called when the frame rate's inconsistent i just learned this myself through digital foundry where the frame rate is like inconsistent and they're always like dogging on games for the inconsistent frame rate like it could be at 30 frame rate dips there's judder um, yeah that that they're there so we make the choice to learn about that stuff and get involved as the hardcore gaming community but yeah i agree with you guys digital foundry is not in bed with anybody at all um i've always respected digital foundry i always seen them as one of my you know sources of truth you know so yes the scorpio is more powerful if the digital foundry says is this percent more powerful that's just what it is okay like you said numbers don't lie and Digital Foundry is not going to lie. They have no reason to be in bed with any of these companies. I think they're a reputable site, like Eurogamer is a reputable site. Um, I don't think there's any, like, you know, um, fault in them or deceit in them whatsoever. They've never proven themselves otherwise. So the fanboys just really got to get over it. I'm all for representing a particular console and all that stuff, but you cannot, you absolutely cannot get around facts. You can have your opinions all day, but when those facts hit, you, you can't dodge them, fam. You got to take it in the face because <laughs> they're facts, you know? So um, it is what it is. Scorpio is more powerful. PlayStation community, we just got to get over it. It, it. it is what it is. So, yep. Mama Cita, thoughts? Mm, well, here's the thing. You know, when, when the news broke uh, the day that Digital Foundry released the specs and countless see uh, you know sea of videos i made it uh an, a point to actually read the articles word for word from the beginning to the end and then actually watch the videos and i cannot lie that i did not hear so so much distortion of the facts as too much food so gratefully stated it there was just so much put out there about it that went against everything that Richard, Richard Ledbetter had stated. I mean, he's, there were specific things that were said that you just cannot argue about. Now, you kind of brought up whether or not the narrative now, you know, have we switched it from, uh, you know, was it, was it about resolution or is it now about power or was it about power and resolution like or, or games, I should say, I'm sorry, power versus games or resolution and power versus games now. And I do remember when I went to buy my PS4 and mind you in 2013, I had purchased, I had an Xbox one. And then about a week later, I went out to purchase my PS4 and I was just, I was very knowledgeable of the console, but I remember the 
salesperson in targets telling me that if I wanted the most powerful console, not knowing what my gaming habits were. And I, I, I think I, I'm, I'm, I can pretty much assume he figured this game, this console wasn't for me because I tend to get that a lot. And I remember him say, saying to me, if you want the most powerful console, if you want the console where your games are going to play best, this is the one you want, you're going to, you want to purchase. So rather you were casual or hardcore or whatever you were, if the salesman tells you the, the, your games are going to look better, aren't you going to choose the console where your games are going to look better? If you don't that's, know any better, yeah. Right. Won't. If you don't know, right. That's what you, that's what you're going to want. Cause that's what you're told. Uh -huh. So I think a lot of people did do that in the beginning and, and, and rightfully so the PS4 at the time, the games were playing better, they had the better resolution, better frame rates for some of the games. So, you know, and so now, I mean, we have Scorpio where now it appears that that's what's not, it appears that's what's going to happen, you know, uh, in, in the fall. So, you know, I'm just curious as to how that narrative is going to be driven on in the retail in the stores and kind of what people are going to hear when they go in and purchase the Scorpio. I, I think, I think it's going to take, um, I think it's going to take a while for that to even like catch on like that because at the beginning of this generation, we didn't have games and stuff like that. So that was the number one selling point for consoles. Now that we have games out there like that, I don't think that's going to be the number one selling point anymore. I, I don't think, think, I don't think you're going to hear much of that anymore. You hear that in the in the fanboy community and the you know hardcore gaming community, yeah. But as far as like casual retail all that stuff, I don't think you're really gonna hear that. Like, yeah, I don't think that's gonna be a problem because of different styles in development that are available now. Back then, when th these consoles came out, it was kind of more like more so a locked down frame rate and a locked down um, resolution. But since then, we've seen them adopt styles like fluctuating frame rates, also dynamic resolutions, checkerboard rendering, um, and I forget temporal uh, so because of these things are available these techniques are, are widely accepted now uh, in the gaming community uh, with like let's say a game locked at 4k at 30 frames or 60 frames runs better on scorpio uh, over ps4 pro that that would be a fact but because you know there are things that are like that are helpful like dynamic resolution dynamic scaling um, I think honestly, a game on Scorpio on PlayStation Four can play just exactly the same without a hitch. The only difference being is that you know the PlayStation Four Pro would have to dip in resolution and or be locked at a lower uh, resolution, but it would still play good. So I don't think we'll we'll experience those same launch Xbox One, PS Four, 2013 uh, problems where one did in fact play better than the other for most of the time. Another thing to consider, the, the reason why it seems like the narrative is changing is because the audience changed. You see, back in 2013, the people who were buying, paying four or $500 for these consoles were the hardcore. So obviously the hardcore knows a little bit more about technology, power, resolutions. Over the last two years with the price drops of 250, 300, at one point Xbox was at $200. Now you're talking the casuals are taking over. So now, like on Twitter, I noticed people saying, oh, all of a sudden, you know, PlayStation gamers have amnesia. It's not that we have amnesia, it's that most of us that are on PlayStation now, they weren't around in 2013. They didn't mm. the console in 2013, 2014. In fact, the biggest year Sony had with PlayStation was 2016. So all those gamers have no idea what people are talking about when they say, hey, three years ago this happened, they'd be like, I didn't own a PlayStation three years mm. ago. Right? You see? So the market is no longer the hardcore market. It's the casual market now. They, well, the, ca the, ca the, ca the casual is longevity. The casual is longevity, and the hardcore is a very, is for the short term. Short term, but they they supply income for that. We the first two million buyers, first two million install base. We it's the hardcore. It is us, and then the other you know eighty million are the casuals, and that's the market ultimately that each one of the big three are after, you know, Here's they, the they... thing when they, when the casual walks in the casual that plays call of duty buys it every year that buys NBA to uh, NBA 2k every year Madden. or Madden every year. And they're told and they come in and they want a, a, a new console or, or they're told if you want your game, are they going to be told that Madden NBA 2k is going to look better on the Scorpio? Is that what they're going to be told? And I mean, I hear you when you say that. No. And I do believe that the hardcores drove the market or drove the sales in the beginning. Yes, um, that's correct. I, I, in the beginning. 
in the Wait, beginning. I, 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 I cannot tell you how many times I stood in GameStop and watched people buy a console with one game, spend four and five hundred dollars to play one game. And that was happening in 2013, 14 and 15 because I was in GameStop a lot. And I saw that all the time, yeah. even when I was online, all, most of my friends, and I was on PS4 the first two years, and most of my friends were playing one or two games. And it's and a multiplat at that. Yeah, um, multiplat. At, at least games. in my experience, everybody that I know with the PlayStation 4, they were getting it for Call of Duty and or Destiny. Um, which yeah. are widely available on the Xbox as well. Oh, um, be it that there is exclusive content, and I have to give that to the, to Sony. I mean, look, Don Matrick, I always, I'm a fan of him. I know not many people are, but I mean, the guy knew what he was doing in terms of locking these deals down. He was throwing money at uh, developers to get anything. Uh, and essentially, Sony adopted the Don Matrick Xbox 360 era strategy. And, sure and, did. And largely, it's it's it is successful. People like to complain about it, especially on the Xbox side. But hey, if if my preferred console choice manufacturer decides to look, for example, well, well, games with gold, none of us complain about that, right? Because no. it's free games. So well, did we complain when Don Matrix supplied us with extra content or extra free month? No, not at all. So I can't. Even even with Ma what Mama Sita says, which uh, which I believe is true because I've experienced those same things. But even if that didn't happen, we we're still having these people buy uh, consoles for one or two multiplats. It's not even down to the exclusives anymore because they're locking down DLC. I mean, and it's and it's it's working to me at least. I think Destiny was the best thing Sony could have ever did when they got that uh, marketing. For sure. That was, that, that part, was, it yeah. was a toss up at the beginning because it did well, but it didn't review well. But mm -hmm. I guess the early adopters they just kept with it, didn't let it go, and they and actually Bungie made it better, made the actual game better. And I think in the long run, that helped Sony. Yeah, I mean, and think about what think not, you get Destiny out the way. Think about who they decided to partner with, Bungie. They were on Team Xbox for so long, and they locked down that game. I mean, Microsoft, to their credit, they tried to do the same thing with Insomniac, but for some reason, these people who kept crying for more games and exclusives didn't buy it. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's shame on them. Same thing with Quantum Break. So, I honestly, it, when, when it comes down to it, like I mentioned earlier, it's about math. You know, so the numbers aren't there, and this is what's happening. Um, why I don't know. But. Imagine if, but if freaking Destiny was an exclusive for Microsoft, that'd be crazy. That would have been a game changer if they would. Yeah, been a game. like would have kept Bungie. That would have been a game changer. And let them do what they wanted to do, and let yeah, them definitely. That'd have been crazy. And to yeah. be honest, Microsoft needed Xbox needed because you know the OG Xbox had Halo as its big premier online multiplayer. Mm -hmm. And then Gears came out on 360 as its big multiplayer. And these games came out rather quickly. Xbox One didn't produce. I mean, the closest was maybe Titanfall, but I think the fact that it was on PC and 360, a lot of people didn't see it as an Xbox One, this is the big title. And the fact that it's an EA title, people already be like, ah, this is eventually going to be on PlayStation anyway. Do you guys think that if it was Xbox exclusive, Destiny would, Destiny would have did better uh, on, uh, P on Xbox than PS4? I think I think Xbox would have been a lot more competitive. Hell, I, I, I don't it, think so. It would have sold out. Oh yeah, because it, it, because a lot of people would have jumped on that game. I, I don't think Easily. so. I mean, I mean there it's still accessible to those exact same people. And again, I mean, if the, it, it's a small, you're saying you're saying to the duck. So I mean, not like, what have done? What have done? Like what I'm saying is what have done like Halo numbers. Being that this is no, no. what have done Halo numbers. No way. Look, you're saying deduct half or more uh, an install base that has done uh, oh, i'm sorry i'm trying to get my thoughts together you're saying deduct the install base of playstation and then have this thing sell as an exclusive and then I, that I do the better xbox than xbox what it did on playstation no 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 what i'm talking about yeah. xbox would have done better xbox like if um in I, I think if xbox would have let halo sit for a while and, and let bungie make destiny and then bring it as an exclusive it would have been, been a console seller, no uh, doubt. Yeah. Oh, fucking yeah. Come on, man. I don't buy it because no, nobody in Japan's buying Xboxes, so that's automatically oh, that's, sales that's, that they lose. But that's South, in South America, they're very expensive because of. Yeah, but, but they're, 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 
They were also basically. more expensive in Europe. Uh, yeah, uh, but Halo uh, didn't do that. Halo, but 360 Halo didn't have, have Japan last gen. As I'm about to say, for the rock, 360 so great. Yeah, and then last gen. Yeah. So that doesn't that that that, that yeah. argument is irrelevant. So well, it's, hurting, hurting, it's hurting Xbox hard. Hard. I'm not saying hurting. Hurting is the wrong word, but. Xbox One didn't capture the North American audience that 360 did. Let's, let's, let's just say that. Yeah, they didn't but, capture but, North America. But the reason behind that wasn't about the games. It was about you couldn't share your games. The, you had to check in for 20, every 24 hours. That, never, that was still being driven, even though they changed that. But once that got out, doing yeah. the Xbox it One reveal, rap. that was a wrap. <laughs> I don't care. They, they could have. And I don't believe that if... Destiny had been an exclusive that Xbox One would have they maybe sure. done a little better I'm North America. I'll say this, in I'll North say America. This. I don't think it would have I, been like this grandiose thing I, because I, there was so much against so much hate towards the Xbox One. It was not just not you. powerful, but the services, uh, what you couldn't do with it. And so what but you could do this with the PS4. That that is what really drove the sales in the PS4 in the beginning. And, and and touching on what you're saying, Mama Sita, it even though they reversed those policies, for how many more months after they reversed it was this still being said exactly. as fact? Exactly, exactly. For for months and months and months. Some All people still think you can't play games. Oh yeah, some yeah. people yeah. still do. Somebody <laughs> told me that in real life not too long ago. <laughs> and a lot like, of the oh, people that, they changed that. And <laughs> if you don't have internet, if you don't have internet. You're not going to be able to play on the Xbox One. I heard this so many times. Well, I don't always I have internet, so I don't get an Xbox One. It was, it was because of the bad communication on Microsoft part, man. They just, it didn't mess it up big time in the beginning, and they really didn't get the communication together, and they didn't really know what that console was for. Nobody knew what it was for at first. It was very confusing for a while, so people were able to just freely run with whatever, you know. And but that's some of those things were true. Some of the things that they did come out with was, was correct that they were going to do people gamers didn't like it yeah where microsoft was trying to go with it and and when you look back now i could kind of almost understand now even though i didn't like some of the things that they were doing but i don't gamers just were not ready for that 24 hour check-in and that was actually what they were going to do i'm glad and, they didn't do it i'm glad sony didn't do it either because in certain instances where your internet might have to get cut off or certain things, you know, you never know. And then you can't play your games and you're locked out of this and locked out of that. And we still go through that sometimes though. Uh, like when this the network goes down and some people games are locked and like, I'm going to, I'm like, right. Which is, which kind of says, I mean, I haven't played a game yet. Most, most of them anyway, that doesn't require me to connect to the servers. And if I don't connect, I can't play. And I, I don't even know how many times what game I've played, actually played offline the past four years. That, that just hasn't happened very much at all, if any. I, I play a lot of games offline. I, I don't like that always online crap in games. I don't like it. Some, some games don't even need always online, and they do it anyway. Look, I, I got to say, I, I agree. I don't like that, but I have found myself in a position where most of the games I play now I'll require it for whatever the case. Right. I don't like this, um, but this this is where I'm at, you know? Yeah, I get it. Destiny I mean, requires being always online. Kind of a good one. I like it either. <laughs> like, yeah. I think Ghost Recon's like that too. You have to uh, cut it off. Uh, the, uh, what is it? Uh, the Division... Um, stupid samurai game. I forgot the name of it. The dual samurai game is oh, it's about for honor. Yeah, for honor. I have no, that. Don't that don't even have to be, but they they're forcing that down your throat. I just I don't like when it's like forcing you down your throat, and it doesn't have to be that way. I hate that crap. At, at the very least, when you look at some of the games that aren't online, they at least, they they really bring the content. Like I'm looking at one of my stacks of games here, and you got Quantum Break, you got Shadow Mordor, um, Arkham Knight, Skyrim. Uh, so none of these require online connection. So at the very least, they're bringing, you know, the, the content. They're bringing you a, a massive quality game. Um, mm -hmm. These online games are are take are nickel and diming us, but oh, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're paying for it. You know, we can okay. complain for it and all we want, but we're doing they, it. That's why they continue to do it over and over again. That's why Destiny 2 is going to sell well, because we just we just continue to throw our money at these games. Man. I don't even think I think that I think Destiny learned their lesson, though. After you think so? Finally, what's giving you that proof? They finally got their shit together and they finally 
Put let's, see, let's see what Destiny 2 does, to fam. Do. Let's see what Destiny 2 does. I bet yeah, it's going to be the same. Activism has a lot to do with it. I think they, they made too much money to learn their lesson. They made too much money. They're going to do the same yeah, thing. But the they made their game better, too, which a lot of developers don't do. They don't continue to build on their games. Well, I think they're going to be able to build on the game better just because of the fact that they don't have to worry about 360 or PS3 no more. They're going to take advantage. Pause. I think oh, um, too much food. He choked on the pop tart. He that's dropped a good out. Point. That's a good point. Yeah. Oh, we go. I think nah, yeah. I might yeah. out. <laughs> nah, I, I got that McDonald's Wi Fi. It's hard hell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like when they didn't come out with a full game and what we played in the beta was basically what we got, and yeah. people were pissed. And they learned that they was like, yo, EA made us keep some of this stuff back. Activision. I mean, not EA, Activision. Activision. EA, uh, Battlefront. You don't talk badly about EA. Perfect. Battlefront is the same way. They came out with a half ass game, but Star Wars people bought it. <laughs> so hopefully they learned too. We've been, how many minutes we've been in this podcast? Um. I'm past due. PlayStation is the best. All right, continue. <laughs> oh. Really, dog? <laughs> right, bro, look, I'm going to say it right now. The Nintendo Switch is more powerful than oh my Scorpio. God. It's more powerful <laughs> than Scorpio. Than Scorpio. No, did we talk about this? <laughs> right, I'm, I'm going to pay attention bro. to the dislike meter. Yeah, I'm watching it right now. I'm watching it right now. It's bro, bro, it, it, just, it just broke. <laughs> yeah, you talk about Nintendo, everything going to break. <laughs> Yo, you're on the channel where fame yes, so. you're on the channel where fame will say something good about a playstation game and he'll get all this type of hate and stuff like all of a sudden he's a fanboy and stuff you gotta be careful with this stuff. yeah yeah you know i think people are annoyed with all of my horizon zero dawn love <laughs> <laughs> are are. You know me. what though you, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm excited that you like a game it's nothing wrong with that like people are stupid if you yeah, like man. a game Look, and it's on another console i, I, I got a dm that? I got a DM on my Twitter, I think it was yesterday or the day before, uh, from some guy I never heard of, and it just says, get cancer. Um, <laughs> yeah. Can you ask that, get, get cancer you? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah um, and it had to do with um, this this uh, back and forth that I had with a Best Buy employee, and he was trying to tell me, like, fake stuff about PlayStation, and I wasn't, like, he didn't expect for me to know my stuff. Uh, Anyways. So um, there's this big uh, Sony fanboy community. I'm not going to say Sony community because I know there's some real Sony fans out there that are polite and respectful. Uh, but, the, you know, the extreme ones. And they, they started tagging me and telling me to die and get cancer. And, Damn. Uh, yeah, we have, uh, yeah, we have we, we have those. Yeah, so I know <laughs> there's that. There's, there's, I'll, I, I put out a, a tweet every now and then that kind of, like, triggers them. And then I... And then what I do is I mute my notifications. So <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and so none of them get to me. And then they're thinking they're at home and they're like, yeah, we showed him. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before I switch topics, I do want to say if you guys are interested in checking out uh, Too Much Food, a.k.a. Switch Plays, and also your boy Porter Rock, their links are in the description down below. I do apologize for having those in late. But if you guys want to check those, uh, check these guys out, check the link in the description and they are right there for you guys. So, uh, before we started the stream, um, the King of Indies was listening to a particular stream from a particular Xbox YouTuber go who goes by the name of Kid Smooth. The best bot. The best bot. The best bot. <laughs> and in this and in his stream, he was ran and raving because this whole Xbox fan fest debacle. Um, so b before we go, I want Mama Cita to explain what this whole debacle was about and why people are so pissed. Can you do it in your most calmest voice, Mama Cedar? Oh my goodness. I, I'll try. Please. 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 Yes. Not Please. always. Please. Go ahead and show your voice. Well, I mean, here's the here's the thing. They put out a couple of days ago that uh, they were gonna accept uh four four hundred Xbox Fan Fest registrations online and a hundred was gonna be reserved for um, giveaways through social media and other avenues. And there was the first drop. They were going to announce uh, the first um, drop of tickets at 6 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. And then throughout the day, and I'm assuming every three hours, there, was a, there, was, there were going to be 100 uh, ticket drops every three or four hours throughout today. But apparently, um, I was one who was on at 9 o'clock. And, of course, I was refreshing and refreshing. And I did, uh, I was able to confirm at about 9.05 is when it released. And I got in and I got a ticket 
and everything was set up and it was confirmed by 9 14 a.m eastern standard time this morning but my understanding is that there was a some type of system error where the system uh, the, the events program and software accepted more than 500 tickets and from what i'm understanding it was possibly even over a thousand tickets were actually accepted and there were supposed to be 100 tickets at the nine o'clock a.m eastern standard pacific time um drop so <clears throat> what so instead of 100 tickets being dropped apparently there was about a thousand tickets people were able to confirm and or at least get in and get confirmation some people got emails some people did not because some people got errors when they were trying to register and they were told they were in but they didn't get confirmation emails i myself received the confirmation email that i was in I mm. you know i registered my credit card and all of that so um sometime after that apparently I guess they realized that there was an error. There was a message saying that they were going to up, they were, were not going to do uh, a 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time drop. And from that point, I think everybody knew that something was wrong. So what they end up doing was they just canceled everybody's reservation and they're going to start from scratch. There's going to be a do over. And uh, my understanding at this point is they're gonna, they're even looking at a different way of registering everybody. So I don't know what they're gonna do at this point. They did say just keep everybody, um, follow the Xbox Twitter feed and Larry Herb, and um, I guess they'll update us. So I think that's what people are upset about. Here's, here's my take on that. I actually am one that got in and I got a ticket and I got a confirmation. I was going to E3 anyway, but I, I, I didn't have a ticket to the fan fest, of course. So I was excited. And when I saw that, of course, I was disappointed. But when I saw my ticket, my ticket number was 1185. Um, I don't know when that number started, the confirmation numbers, but if I were to assume it started at 100, I wouldn't have got in. I mean, I'm sorry, if it started at 1000, I wouldn't have got in. And I know if it started at zero, I wasn't supposed to get in at nine o'clock. I do think the people that the, whatever the first 100 people that were able to get in at the 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time drop, I feel like their tickets should have been honored. Anybody after that, I mean, they did say 100 tickets at nine o'clock. So, I mean, you know, I, I, yes, be upset, but is that was that the was that the procedure? No, the procedure wasn't to accept a thousand people. It wasn't to accept 500 people at nine o'clock. It was to accept 100 and then at 12, another 100 and then at three o'clock. So at this point, that's all been scrapped. And I think they're just going to do a redo. So people are upset. And I understand why, because I mean, I was upset. Damn. Here's what annoys it. me. Here's what annoys me. One thing I love about PlayStation, the thing they do is the PlayStation experience. It gives you an up close and personal thing with PlayStation. It's all PlayStation. They come, let people come out and they treat you guys to to, to new things, right? Xbox right. does not have an event like that. So FanFest, I think, it's is something. Like, though, man. Hold on, FanFest and hold on, PlayStation hold on. PSX are two different things, though. I, 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 no, no, listen, if y'all let me finish my point. I understand FanFest is something different and something smaller, but it needs to be, it needs to allow more people. You got millions of Xbox fans in the United States of America, and you only letting 500 people come? That's no. complete bullcrap. That, that's just not enough people. I'm sorry. Everybody, everybody who, now I get, I get the whole, because the whole E3 sitting, you know, people getting uh, spots in, I get that aspect of it. But if a thousand people got in, let them thousand people in. Do something for them, because you got millions of people a thousand people is not a lot compared to the millions of fans that you have. Mm. I'm sorry, they dropped the ball. Yeah, but no doubt. We come to PSX. It's more than 500 people. It it for well, P and PSX is in E3. I've been to PSX. Have, you have to pay for PSX, and that's specifically for fans. I was at the very first PSX in Las Vegas, and oh. I had a great time. Yes, and I have pictures with. Oh, so you should have you should have seen Kev and Cece then. They were there too. I, I, I may have, and it, it was it was it was a nice experience. I had to pay my hotel and my ticket. 
I mean, they, they, the, the conference itself was, was, and I had to pay for that as well. So it's not like that was free. Xbox Fan Fest is, I mean, I'm not saying you don't have to pay, like if you have to pay your plane and, and ticket, your plane ticket and airfare if you're traveling as well, but the conference itself is free. And I'm not by no means trying to excuse. I'm just explaining what happened. I, I personally do believe that, <laughs> that, that those that, that got in, I understand the anger because I was one of them. And I was very excited when I got my, my confirmation email. But I do understand that when I looked at my ticket and I saw the 1185, I know I really didn't get in because I wasn't in that, that first 100. That's all I'm saying. Uh, uh, uh. Um, but should they have, like Fame is saying, should they have accommodated everybody that, that got in? Well, yeah, okay. But then if you accept all the thousand people that are in there, in that room, I don't know how many people are allowed. Do you tell, Do you take seats from press? Or do you, you know, like, what do you do with that? No, you know, you're, not, you're not gonna take my seat. Cause isn't fa- yeah, fan take fest, Nicodemus isn't, isn't, seat. But is it, if, if I'm not mistaken, if if, it's, if my ignorance is showing, I apologize. Correct me. If I'm not mistaken, fan fest isn't just about going to the conference. Correct. They're gonna have a uh, Scorpio set up for people to play some something, something like that. They got a lot of stuff going on. You can still do that and just not let the other 400 people inside the conference. Does Fan Fest does Fan Fest have something to do with the Microsoft E3 press conference or does it yes. have to yeah, they let it's the, the people they let the people it's the in? E3 is Microsoft. You specifically come to Microsoft conference. You don't have access to the entire E3 conference. You have access to Microsoft's conference. And then I think they do like a two-day um Activities for it's those, dope. Everybody, everybody go down there and they pass out food to people. Like, it's actually this, pretty dope from what I think. Pass me out on every E3, they do this fan fest, yeah. E3 okay. <clears throat> and Sony, does Sony does, does Sony offer the equivalent to that at E3? Not that I've heard of, no, they don't. No, they they don't. don't, but, but I don't invite fans at all. I heard, I don't know though, because I know their booth when, when they because uh, Erica uh represented us at E3 last year, if not last year, the year before. And um, no, was it last year? I think it was last year. She was there with BG. Um, and they do accommodate the people there, but I don't know about actual fans. I don't know about that. But I know the actual people. Like they, they be having carpet on the floor, and they be looking. Their booths be nice. Yeah, they don't have no fan fest. No. Like, yeah, I don't know about an actual fan fest. I know their booths and stuff are set up. They give out. Yeah, but you have to have an invite. Somebody has yeah. to invite you in. You can't just be a regular old fan like me and just walk into the Sony press conference and say, "Hey, show me your nah. PS4 yeah, game." No. <laughs> yeah, buddy. This year yeah. they're gonna do that though because they letting people in. They letting the fans in. But I don't I, know about conference. I have a buddy who works like in, I guess in the industry. It would be the technical term, but. Um, what they do, they have these rooms, like for example, you go into the convention and you got to walk around certain walls. Um, and you're thinking that you're walking down a hallway, but inside that hallway is an actual room and they, they treat the bigger fans that they know of. Like, let's say you're a YouTuber, they recognize, like they will let you into these smaller private rooms and there's food in there, um, and for, for just you drinks in there for just you. And then they have like you know, 10, 15 consoles in there with these games that they'll let you play. So I know even within all this, they still have private rooms for, you know, I guess, your VIPs. But I don't know if you would consider that as a PlayStation experience thing. And I, I technically wouldn't because you could only fit like maybe 20 people in that room. But Sony does do that. Okay, okay. okay. So, I know we're supposed to get some kind of email thing. They're supposed to send everybody. They got confirmation emails something special is supposed to be coming i have no idea what that's supposed to be i'm, I'm hoping they at least give, give y'all some xbox the design lab controllers that's why, um, what's his name was pissed off on twitter today <laughs> that's why kids move was so mad today but i do want to i do want to switch to the the main topic of today's podcast so i, I want to go down the panel and, and i got two questions for each of you guys to answer okay the first question it will be how can that now i want i want people to realize we are talking about north america okay because to talk about the world and all this stuff is it's pointless when it comes to microsoft i'm sorry not the world really japan it's pointless to really say how to take up japan because they can't even the 360 which sold amazing 
did not do well in Japan. So we're not focusing on, we're focusing on North America. And people say, oh, you, you guys are just, you guys are uh, short-sided. But uh, you guys are, uh, <laughs> you guys are saying <laughs> that when, when NPDs are released. So we're talking about North America. I just want to get that out there, okay? So I'm going to go down the panel. And the first question I'm going to ask each one of you guys is, how can Xbox regain control in North America? And the second question is, will and how can PS4 continue its dominance? So I'm going to start with Nicodemus. Uh, so how can Xbox gain control in North America? Um, so it, it's definitely going to take more than the world's most powerful console at this point. Um, in order for them to take North America, a couple of things got to happen. They're going to have to get some of these, you know, popular third party deals. They're really going to have to get back in the game with that uh, to appeal to these U.S. gamers. Um, another thing, you know, I know people, you know, don't think exclusives matter, but exclusives do matter. Um, and, and, and like I was saying, I think to somebody, when it comes to um, console sales and things like that, when you get the casuals behind it, um, that gets the cash. I mean, not the casual. When you get the hardcore behind it, that gets the casuals behind it as well. Um, so when you got, you know, exclusives and um, more games on your console and stuff like that, that is very appealing to gamers in general. So that's the second thing they really got to do. Um, I don't think that, you know, I think the first step as far as dropping the Scorpio as a mid console refresh and it, you're putting as much into it as they can. If they make it affordable, they add the games, get these third party deals back, you know, and kind of go back to that formula that they had with your 360, which PS4 adopted. I think if they start doing that within a year, I would say they could start really um, fighting back, but it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in the first couple of months. It's just not. PS4 is going to continue to um, quote unquote dominate the US. Now you may start seeing more um, you know, maybe go two months, PlayStation wins, then you may get Xbox. You may start seeing them get sprinkled in a little more and it may be, become more of a real competition. You may start seeing that in 2018, but it's not gonna happen right away, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, you know, you could look, you could easily look back at what we've seen. This is why I brought up the 360 era before. It's not, it's not speculation, it's literal fact that's happened. So if we look back at the time with the 360 and the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 3 uh, has has had the worst launch that I've ever seen ever. Period. <laughs> you know, you got a you got a console launching for six thousand dollars and your firstborn child. And you know, look to, to their uh, to to their credit, they turned that around. Um, and and with console refreshes they've been able to achieve it alongside games because they released some really great games for that console. Um, but look, look how far behind they were the 360. And I never thought that they would catch up. They, they yeah. I, I honestly think at the end they surpassed. They did. So, they did. so people say, well, the PlayStation or the Xbox 360 one. And I'm like, if you're talking about the two of them, no, they did not. If you're talking about the three of them, they still didn't because you had the Wii. Um, but but the PlayStation 3, they showed, uh, what is it, resiliency. And Sony has done this before from behind. So imagine when they're ahead of the, the game. I don't see, I honestly don't see them falling behind. But I do see Scorpio getting so close, but that's it. Yeah, I think Scorpio, um, it, it, in the conjunction with everything that I said, I think they have a real chance. If they do those things and they do them right and, and really get the gamers' attention, because they really got to get uh, the majority of the gamers' attention again. So if they really start doing that, I think they would have a chance to, because, I mean, it's, it's a really big lead right now. If you're talking in terms of just, you know, sales and, um, you know, winning NPDs, you know, Sony has a huge, huge monumental advantage, and they have a lot – a fighting back to do not to say that they can't do it um because yet like you said last generation sony did come back from that horrendous launch and so they can do it they just need the right seasoning you know and put in the gumbo cook it up stir it and feed it to the public you know but you see what they had to do to, to get out of that rut though it took what around what four or five years before oh, they got yeah, their footing? Like, like six years <laughs> yeah it took them about five to six years to get their yeah. footing, and then guess what happened first party started releasing games that's what got my attention those, those exclusives the people first say that, party listen, finally, to me, listen, finally. To me, listen to me people say the exclusives do not matter i'm gonna tell you this what got my attention because i was a hardcore xbox 360 fan didn't want nothing to do with ps3 whatsoever when i started seeing those ps3 exclusives and i started seeing xbox 360 exclusives drop that's what made me get a ps3 i'm telling you it matters mama cedar what you think sweetheart i don't know i 
I don't know. My my take on that is I you know I don't necessarily believe that Xbox has to beat PlayStation to be successful. I know we live in a world where we know we have to crown a winner. That's and not the question, though, Ma. That's not the question. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, he <laughs> asked me, did I feel like um, the Xbox could come back and and dominate or beat the PS4? Yeah. So can I answer the question, please? Yeah, Ma. I want to. <laughs> Don't you stroke her, Nick. <laughs> Don't you stroke her. I know, I know, excuse me. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you right now. This is the segment where Fame got his ass handed to him. And 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 I was <laughs> answering the question that I don't necessarily believe that Xbox has to beat the PlayStation to be successful in numbers. Does it have to say now we've we've overtaken, you know, the NPD? And he also stated in North America. You know, does it have to do that? I don't think it has to do that, but. Most people do. They think if, if you're not on top, then you've lost. Do you so, think first or last? But right. Listen, real quick, on, on that note, do you think Microsoft, do you think the execs and stuff, do you think they want it? Like, do you think they want it? Of course the they NBA? do. Of, of, of yeah. course. Right. right. I so, see, you know see, why I know they yeah. want it? Because last generation, they rubbed PS3. And, exactly. And, and whenever, and whenever they, they went but, NPDs sure. out, whenever they went NPDs out, you know, but they celebrate. Here's, here's, here's so the beauty it is, of conversation. It is, this is my opinion. And I'm giving my opinion and I'm saying that I don't know. Now, does Microsoft and Sony, of course, Microsoft wants to be on the top and they need to do whatever. I'm just saying, it. I don't know if, if they have to be, if you have to be number one to be considered successful. You're talking about like as far as, you're talking about as far as like Microsoft as a company. Overtaking or... PlayStation in North America, you know what, numbers, though? consoles, a, a lot of people... is what I'm talking about. I understand what you're saying, Mama Sita, and I I agree with you. And also, a lot of people think that Microsoft is doing so terrible and so bad. And I'm looking at them like you do know they're out they're out doing the 360, right? It's just that PS4 is just doing extremely well, over over and, well. Exactly. But, but we don't. We, but listen. But listen. But listen. Here's the that's thing. That's the point that I'm making. So, but so that I can finish. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, what was the second part, fam? Because this I didn't uh, get the king of endings <laughs> has yeah, disturbed and my interrupted favorite. my group. I didn't even get to. I didn't get okay. to answer the second part though. I didn't even get to answer it. Say what? I didn't get to answer the second part. <laughs> Why should you? <laughs> Because they, because he called Mama Seed and then okay. I, think, I think we're answering the first. Want to answer to that? Call me first, and I didn't get the oh, Go ahead, King of Mama Cedars. Then, if you want to answer, I'm the king of everything that exists. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> don't make me turn this camera on. Put my crown on. Never mind. No, you know. I'm trying to put on a show. I don't know who he's trying to front from. Front <laughs> from but... we, we already know what happens behind closed doors, right, Mom? Yeah, we do know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, listen. I BS you guys now. If y'all guys follow us on Twitter, you know the very first time Ma and Nick was in the same space together, she gave him a tampon and told him to have that happen with, with his pony, period. Oh, man. Yes, you know because Ma he, is a savage. Yeah, you want to you wanna get, I mean, you want to uh, get all outside yourself. You want to come at me sideways. You must be, Ma is a you savage. must need a mat all and a tampon. And that's exactly what I gave you. Not a mat all. <laughs> I gave him a mat all, pee, and a tampon. And then later that night, we was drinking and playing that. <laughs> we sure were. <laughs> I love my team, yo. The knack part is when I'm laughing. <laughs> like, like legit, legit, man. No, they wasn't playing knack. It was like Mama C was playing drink. knack, and Nick was running behind us. Oh, yeah. really you have to be drinking to play that game. Because <laughs> she was, she was like the one. She was the one that was invincible. So I was being strategic. I was using strategery. <laughs> strategery. <laughs> Well, about, go, go ahead, go ahead, uh, Ma. Finish. No, I'm done. I'm done now. I'm trying to get my point. I'm done. <laughs> oh, go ahead, okay. on. So, what, what points am I supposed to be making here? I forget. Right, it's I been think, like 48 I think minutes. There's just two questions. How can Xbox regain control in North America? And um, will or can uh, PS4 dominance continue? Well, I mean, Microsoft has enough money to buy all of Sony. They can do that. And then, oh, then, uh, and, then <laughs> and, and how can what? What was the second one? I got the memory of a fish. How, how can... How can or will PS4 continue its dominance in North America? 
Uh, I think, uh, I mean, their current install base, period. I mean, they're, they're, I think it's going to, they're going to stay that way. They got a lot of fans, be it ignorant or informed ones, be it crazy wow. or, or um, genuine fans, not fake fans. But I think it's going to stay that way. They got, they got enough good games. They got enough variety. Um, they have a bunch of policies that are questionable and that I, I don't agree with. And that I think if people were informed, they wouldn't have a PlayStation. But because honestly, all they care about is games. Um, I think that they'll, they'll continue their dominance through the exact same strategy strategy they have now. We've seen them dominate in the PlayStation 2 era with the weakest console. If you don't include the Dreamcast, um, we've seen them technically surpass the 360 with the PlayStation 3. We've seen them dominate with the PlayStation 1. I mean, it's just history over and over again. I mean, it's, it's, it's about leadership. Uh, and they're they're they show resiliency the one time that they were threatened. So um, yeah, I agree with Mama Sita. Uh, I think that uh, Xbox doesn't have to overtake in terms of raw numbers to be successful. I think the industry as a whole is healthy anyways, whether it be Microsoft at the head or Sony. Um, it's about getting consoles in the home. It's about getting games out there in in people's hands. Um, and if you look at the numbers, the, uh, the Xbox one is selling better than the 360, the PS4 is selling better than the PS3. And, um, and the Nintendo switch is on track to sell better than the, uh, Wii, um, selling 2 million, nearly 2 million, I think in one month, which is absurd. Um, so look, the, this generation is looking good. PlayStation, I think is going to stay in the lead. Scorpio is going to close that gap. That's about it. Porter Rock. I agree with the rest of the panel saying that on three, um, Xbox One is own right is successful. Um, but you know how you know the community is, media is. If you're not number one, you're last. But if I were to look at if Xbox were to take over North America, I would say it has to be two things. There has to be the Xbox One S leading the charge and advertisement. Because I think and I think advertisement is the worst thing Microsoft has done. They just they just have done a terrible job this year with advertisement. It seems like every other commercial I see is PlayStation. Even I'm getting sick of seeing PlayStation commercials. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. all right. Have like, I was watching the Flash the other day. Finals, though? They've been showing the hell out of the PlayStation. Yeah, I'm like, I was watching Flash, trying to catch up on Flash and On Demand, and every other commercial was a PlayStation. I couldn't fast forward it. Oh, yeah. So like, you know, if you go to my movie theater, if you go to like, the movie theater in my town, they play PlayStation ads in theater on a 30 foot screen. So right. Yeah, you're right about that, too. I saw. During a uh, power rangers. <laughs> no, yeah. Listen, when I saw seeing Let It Die, Peace the commercials that. run over and over. I'm like, Let It Die, a free to play. Yeah. Getting constant yeah. promotion on TV. I was like, yeah. okay, come yeah. on. Yeah. Every every Sunday, every Sunday morning, I have someone knock on my door at eight in the morning. They're like, hey, let me tell you about the God and Creator we call PlayStation. Oh, the gospel. And they, and they the hand gospel. me a they hand me a pamphlet. You know what though? Uh, I'm glad they are doing better marketing wise on Puerto Rico. Because if you remember the PS3 era, they oh. Sony was terrible. They were broke. No, it wasn't even <laughs> that PS3 was, was killing was their slogan. It <laughs> wasn't <laughs> even being broke because during during it the beginning of the, the, the beginning of the PS3, it wasn't broke and it and it and it was terrible. Now they spent all that money. They spent all that money making that damn thing trying to sell for six hundred. Nobody was buying it. They went let me, quick. They let did. me tell you this. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Look, the PlayStation 3, their slogan back then was, it only does everything. And I remember this now specifically because um, I was uh, doing this research thing where PlayStation adopted uh, the entire catalog of uh, the 360 strategy where um, – uh, wait, wait. Yeah, with the PS4 – um, where they made it about the games. And then Don Matrick started doing the PlayStation 3 strategy because the Xbox One's supposed to do everything, but yeah. it looked like gamers cared about games over media. Yeah. And so that's what's happening this generation. So I remember that there, I know I know it may seem random, but I remember you, you were talking about the uh, advertising, which was terrible, and it was. So they were, they were marketing everything else except for the games. So that's why they were doing so bad at one point. I would say, yeah. So for um for Microsoft, I know Scorpio's coming out, but I don't think a five hundred dollar console in the middle of the gen is the answer. I think it's gonna please, you know, the 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 hardcore gamers. I think you think so? Yeah, I think so. That was gonna be four forty nine. I think I think it's gonna be S is going fly. Yeah, the rumor is three ninety nine. Look, Phil Spencer Phil Spencer said this. He said uh, he said straight up, Phil Spencer said they Sony built a great console for 2016 because that was what was available. That was the best silicon available. So let's, and it cost $399. If that was the best 
that you can come up with tw in 2016. What's the best that you can come out in 2017? The Scorpio. So I think 399 is really going to do it. And if, then if you're going to see 399. Holy That's big deal. shit. Scorpio, yeah, look, they're, they're, PS4 they're Pro is going to be loss. 350. If they if they do it for 400, that means they're willing to take a loss and they they're really they really trying to That joint going to sell. That joint that joint Listen, that joint go. But you ain't gonna find that joint. They lowered the S. We all, all, we all thought Pro was gonna maybe do what it was, what it was gonna do. Yeah, but but the, Scorp but what, the Scorpio look, doing a mid-gen refresh a lot better than what the Pro doing a mid-gen refresh. Like, no, I'm just saying. But you got to look at those slims and look at these families who gonna be going out and buying these things too. Cause them, I didn't, I didn't expect for a slim on either side to do as well as it's been doing. Like the Xbox One S and the PlayStation Slim. I didn't think those joints were gonna do as good as they're doing. And you have to look at the audience. If if the Pretty audience, much. if the consumers <laughs> this year don't already own an Xbox One or a PlayStation Four, then chances are they're not gonna jump at a five hundred dollar console on their first thing. They're, they're they're looking for the cheaper product. That's why I said look. the Xbox One S is the key. That two hundred dollar slim yeah. and what, what was it? Two hundred two fifty. The and majority of people. Shit, them joints gonna fly. The majority of people is going to be looking for a $500 console is pretty much the hardcore that wants that better graphics. And I think it's, it's an easier pill. It's an easier pill to swallow for the Xbox fans because you're transferring all your stuff onto the Scorpio and you're getting everything that you already own. Just better versions, you know, improvements and everything that Microsoft has plans. Now for a PlayStation gamer, it's a little bit harder because now you're talking about two, three years of stuff you invested in, you know, hundreds and thousands of dollars in games and content. And I'm like, damn. You, you know, know you pay, pay five hundred dollars for a Scorpio, but now you're thinking, why don't what do I do with what I already invested in over the last three years? Yo, here's what you need the biggest hey, hardcore real quick, gamer. Real quick, is real quick, while I got my thought. Real quick, I mean, cut y'all, but while I got my thought, what what Microsoft I feel like needs to do if this thing is three ninety nine, um, that's huge, right? But also, what they need to do, I feel like, is they need to have this the Scorpio hooked up in every store possible, connected to a four K TV. So people can actually see how yeah. good and great it looks. Because that's one thing that the pro didn't do that I was very disappointed in, that they didn't have this thing hooked up to 4K TV. They had it hooked up to regular 1080p TVs. Like you can't get yep. like like you can't see how great it looks and be convinced. You know, you can't, you can't, can't hear about HDR. You can't yes, hear about 4K. Exactly. You gotta see it. So if they had this thing 399 in stores hooked up to 4K TVs, oh man, if you're gonna get you're gonna get a massive amount 4K of 4K TVs to play no 4K games. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Why? I, I tweeted Phil Spencer about, about this, man. They got they don't got 4K TVs on their Xbox. Same thing for PlayStation. They don't got HDR capable televisions. They're they're telling you about it. They're marketing it. That you could see their advertising in aisle. They're not showing you. They're just telling you about it. That's it. Hey guys, I got I got a quick question. It's kind of really off topic, but it's like my yes. Y'all said HDR. Remember when the PS4 Pro was revealed and they revealed HDR for the regular PS4? What the hell happened to that? That wasn't real, right? That was just them talking out their ass. Like, I don't see no HDR games on the on the regular PS4. They said regular PS4? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I think the problem is people can do it. the regular PS4, they're not getting 4K TVs, you know, so it's really yeah. hard to know. Yeah, but but what but what? I I don't know because if I'm not mistaken, the PS4 doesn't have the proper USB. To run HDR. What I know. No, 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 no. It's 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 an HDMI port. And here's the thing: the HDMI port that's HDMI built on the uh, the the HDMI port that's on the original Xbox One and PlayStation Four. It's HDMI 1.4. Now those could actually do 4K um, yeah. straight up right there. But it does 4K, and I believe 24 frames a second, which is the frame rate that we uh, that is synonymous with films, um, but not 30 frames, not 60 frames. Also, HDR is capable of being done on there, but it's not it's not like a full HDR. It's kind of like what people call like faux HDR. It, it is, but it isn't. It's kind of like getting imitation crab. You're eating it. It tastes like it. It looks like it, but you know it ain't. Um, so. That's essentially what the PlayStation oh, okay. 4, I tell people, PlayStation 4 has fake uh, HDR. Now, PlayStation 4 Pro, that could do full-blown real HDR. But, I mean, that's getting down to a super, super tech spec level, and pe everybody's going to argue with me and tell me to get cancer. But go ahead. Just watch, just oh, watch no. Digital Foundry videos, everybody. you get the truth. Man, if I want to so watch Digital Foundry, I'll just do it. I don't want to know. I just want to know about games. I don't care about all the other shit. That shit is irrelevant. <laughs> I'm telling you, I played I played eight bit games. I'm all about having fun, it's man. It's the truth. Some people, some people would say, "Oh, yeah, 
I'm like, no, it really never mattered to me. I just want to be playing the, play the game. Well, they cared about it because no, they I'm were saying, comparing. I'm saying they were comparing, uh, you know, gr- uh, strands of grass at one now point. Now, that shit was fucking so stupid. So, uh, people cared about that it, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a oh fact. yeah they that's did and they would run articles saying which console had more grass than the other so people did care about you it i know you don't and i never did boundary. but other I people do you know who cared the freaking fanboys and fangirls out there who wanted to keep a war no matter yo i keep telling people no matter what these consoles do or don't do there will always be a war people will always switch sides and they will always find something to talk shit about no matter what you know, speaking of war, before we wrap, I do want to say I'm gonna let everybody know that uh, it it is gonna be a, a two XP civil war because Mama seated and lost her mind challenging me and Nick to uh, oh, join that. So yeah, I saw that. It's gonna be a two oh, civil I war. I lost my mind. Um, Kronk, all they gotta do is go look at the go look at the oh, video. It. It's on YouTube. So how oh, have I lost my mind challenging you to uh, me and Kronk challenging you too? And, and and do this demo or whatever this this whatever you Think, call it. I, I mean, Kronk and I was one and two like a lot. No, 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 no. Okay. So I was, I was once, once I fix my once I fix my sensitivity. Mm-hmm. Now no, that you, trans, you, was yeah, up. you won Turn, one you won round. All people up, nigga. You don't count. You and don't get hated because y'all was dying. Soon as I see that red glow, I'm running. <laughs> he had one move. Throw that red glow over there, everybody, and blow everybody. Don't up. be mad. Nah, I'm, 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 coming, I'm, coming, I'm coming with it. I'm coming with it though. Like y'all don't want it because I did win like three games. Ma, you won a couple games in a row. That's why you all, that's why you all gassed up. So don't, forget, don't forget, don't forget the king was on top a couple of times. You heard me. According yeah, to Nick, according to Nick, Ma only won to because of me. Because I kept blowing Nick up. Yeah, that's, that, those are facts. Ma, Ma won as much as she did because of fame. You need to cut that crap out. Oh, we had a couple one on one battles. Uh, I think I took you out a few, a, a lot, fan. I think I killed yeah. you a lot. I, Let's go to the video. I, I, I did. I did. And I, I bested you more times than you bested me one on one. Don't you got a um, PlayStation? Um, I actually purchased one. I bought the Destiny oh, one, the, the white one. Oh, uh, man. You got to get I, drunk. I, I, I bought one and I played it for a bit and uh, I traded it in um, oh, because. Wow. Uh, it was it was just doing nothing but looking pretty. Um, I traded it in and I, and I got I swapped it out for an Apple Watch and I used my Apple Watch more than I did my PlayStation Four. I'm not even kidding. Uh-oh. Like I just I did not use it and I also didn't like sitting there and looking at the glare of my the the light on the controller on my TV. I didn't like that at all. Oh man, I so, uh, so much fun on drawing. Uh-uh. Let's get these <laughs> outros going, man. Live stream this too. We appreciate y'all coming, rocking. Well, let's get these outros going so everybody can get to their families. I hear my daughter on the other side of the house blowing her lungs through the roof. So I that's time. That's probably my cue to get up out of there. So let's do let's do uh, not intros, outros. Uh, my light skinned it, brother, from somebody else's mother. We still have not found. Mr. Nicodemus X. We we still looking we still looking for her, man. I think she lost in Puerto Rico somewhere, fam. I don't know where. She, I don't know where. Puerto <laughs> Rock. Find our mama, fam. Find our mama, man. She out here somewhere, man. We need her to, to really um bring back our Black history. We don't know where we from. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yo, yeah, this is Nicodemus, the king of Indies himself. I uh, make sure you guys tune into uh, Trophy Life podcast every other Tuesday night. Um, is the Tick official PlayStation podcast. So make sure you guys tune into that. And then also TickGN.com is your source for gaming-related news, topics, reviews, and Switch play. Okay, so make sure you guys go over there and check that out. And then what else we got going on out here in these streets? Oh, yeah. Don't forget, PlayStation is the best. It is the king of North America. It ain't <laughs> going to change. You heard me? Boy, if you don't get yours. And we out of here. <laughs> <laughs> And then we got uh Miss Don't Stroke Me, Mama Cedar. I don't even try. <laughs> <laughs> don't even try, cause I, you know what? I'm just gonna hold my peace and just let the. And when we, when we, oh, oh, y'all just okay. Anyway, <laughs> thank oh, yeah. everybody. This is I'm Mama Cedar. Oh no, uh, uh, I got some for you, Nicodemus. Oh, let's go. Let's Mr. Go. King of Indies. All right. Mm-hmm. No, here. that's all. Right. It's on now. It is on. Practice. Anyway, thanks. Everybody. I want to thank our special guest though tonight. Too much food. Thank you so much um, for all your well. knowledge and dro- just dropping that knowledge on us. And as well as you, Porter Rock, I appreciate 
you coming in and um, sharing your information with us. And both of you are very knowledgeable guys. And I will definitely love to podcast with you guys definitely. in the future. Thank, thank you so much. much. Damn, you know, I feel good right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, thank, thank you for, thanks for having me on. It's been quite some time. It's been overdue for me to be doing some shows again. I took a little hiatus from that so I could work on my show and try to get the format down uh, with how I like it. And, um, but I really wanted to do a podcast and this really fit, fit me well, especially with TICGN family. So uh, thanks again, fam, um, or fame. Well, both, I guess. <laughs> um, and, uh, and um, you know, I'm very, I'm, I know I got a, a, a heavy Nintendo uh, channel, um, but I'm still extremely knowledgeable in the game community. I love games and I, I love learning all these little things down to the statistical numbers, down to the big things like games. But um, I'm always, I'm, o I'm always open, uh, open to come on to your shows and, and be it anybody here. Um, I, I love to talk some gaming and, and make new fans and make new friends. So um, uh, thanks for having me on again. Don't be any strangers in the future. My DM box is always open. I hope I hear from you in the, again in the future. Crunk girl, we know you came in late. What's happening? Hey, man, I'm, I'm out here getting these job interviews and stuff like that, but it is what it is. Um, Thanks for having me as always. Shouts out to the guest, my boy Porter Rock. He already know what it is. And my first time talking to too uh too much food. Um <laughs> as well. I, I I think I hit you on Twitter a couple of times. I pay attention. So um, <laughs> thanks for coming through and no uh problem. with us. You always welcome. But we be having a ball on here. Some of these Cats on hand will be knowing how to act when company come on. But yeah, man. Um, thanks for everybody for uh, dropping in the chat, making the chat so lively. Um, make sure y'all follow me on Twitter. I'm um, at Crunker Seven Eleven. Um, make sure y'all check us out. We're gonna be playing some Drawn to Death for sure, for sure. Cause we had a a great time uh last weekend it was man we had fun so uh make sure y'all check us out on that as well um also uh i'll be dropping my persona 5 uh impression slash review this week on sheattack.com so make sure y'all check that out as well and as requested because we give you guys what you want pull the rock <laughs> and what's up hey fame thank you so much for the invite uh, Crunk Girl, my sister from another mister. It's good seeing you again. Oh, Mama, yes, uh, Mama. I, no, me and Porter, me and Porter Rock go back, man. We oh yeah, we go back. <laughs> you see, we're like okay. war horses. We're like war horses in these streets. Hey, <laughs> we try. Well, all right. Okay, Mama <laughs> Sita, it was such an honor to meet you, King of Indies. I gotta get you. I gotta get you all on my podcast. Oh man. yeah, for sure. I'm down for that, man. Yeah, I gotta keep you on the trophy life one as well. So. Oh man. hell yeah! I I don't even like the name trophy life. Yeah, yeah, we out here. <laughs> yeah, too much food. It was it was great to meet you. Um, and speaking about my podcast, check out Sixty Frames No Lag on my channel. Um, it's hosted every Wednesday, seven p.m. Eastern. But I'm gonna do a special one tomorrow because it's it's been a while. Over the last six weeks, I wasn't able to podcast, but now I'm back. And, you know, so this has been the first podcast I just came back with. So I appreciate, you know, bringing me back in, Fane. Man, it's been great. Awesome that's podcast. That's what's up, my brother. And Nick, uh, you have a question before we leave? Oh, yeah. I want to ask the uh, Xbox YouTube uh, community a question right quick. If it's you mad, I'm going to mute you. No, no, no. I'm just going to ask him a question right quick. Um, so how does it feel that, you know, me as a PlayStation gamer got front row seats at the Microsoft press conference? <laughs> How do y'all how do y'all feel about that? That y'all ain't get your invite yet. Oh man. Where your Sony? Know, man. Where your Sony? Curious. Where your Sony press conference I'm just invite? Curious. It's coming, fam. No, <laughs> no, come on here and brag when you get yeah, a Sony, oh, Sony press Sony conference Sony invite. Sony I hope y'all know no, it. No, brag when you get that you, one. It's coming. It's coming. You're gonna see it on Yo. Twitter. You're gonna Microsoft see it on Twitter. Get it Sony. I, 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 together, I, Nick? Do, I do want to put out there that, um, as you guys know, I got some things going on, so I had to give up my seat for E3 this year. Uh, <laughs> and graciously, uh, too much food is going, so that's that's great. But I did, have to, I did have to give up my seat for E3 this year because I got some things going on. I'm trying to buy a house, things like that, so my priorities are in order. But I will be doing a bit of a tick collage of a, you know, Avengers type podcast together with with the remaining tick people who aren't going to E3 this year. So I definitely want you guys to be sure to take that out. And uh, I want you guys to remember that Xbox 
is the best box, and Nicodemus oh. is the best bot. Oh, wow. You're about to kick out the conference. No, I'm going to kick you out like United Airlines. Oh, yeah, we out on that. You ain't got no 